Hello, welcome to what is what bulletin in the month of December. So we have already seen some what is what bulletins which means the monthly current affairs of the respective month. So now we are going to discuss the monthly current affairs of the month of December. So different color backgrounds are used in order to differentiate the news, the topics. So let us get into. Reserve Bank of India has released its fifth bi-monthly monetary policy. Produced by the Monetary Policy Committee chaired by Reserve Bank of India Governor Dr. Urjit Patel. The Reserve Bank of India it has injected some durable liquidity amounting to Rs 360 billion in October and 500 billion rupees in the month of November through open market operations. So total durable liquidity injection so far is 1.36 trillion for 2018 and 19. So Reserve Bank of India recently it has released its fifth bi-monthly monetary policy which is produced by the Monetary Policy Committee. This Monetary Policy Committee is chaired by the Reserve Bank of India Governor Urjit Patel. So according to which the policy rates given is repo rate stands at 6.5% and reverse repo rate it stands at 6.25% and marginal standing facility rate it stands at 6.75% and bank rate it stands at 6.75% as well. And along with this the CRR is 4% and the SLR statutory liquidity ratio it stands at 19.5% according to this bi-monthly report. Ombudsman scheme to provide cost free mechanization to redress grievances of customers related to digital transactions says RBI. Reserve Bank of India it has planned digital payments ombudsman. So digital payments ombudsman scheme is going to be planned by the Reserve Bank of India to resolve the digital complaints. So this is going to be cost free and this scheme is going to be notified from the month of January 2019. So as we know recently as we have discussed in one of the videos Reserve Bank of India has released a report saying that the cyber frauds they have doubled when compared to the previous years. So we can say that it is an initiative as a part of solving this issue. So digital payments ombudsman scheme it is going to be cost free to redress the grievances of customers relating to digital transactions. Reserve Bank of India has imposed a fine of 1 crore on Indian Bank for violating cyber security norms. Indian Bank has been imposed a fine of 1 crore rupees for violating the cyber security norms. Capital First has merged with IDFC Bank to create IDFC First Bank. IDFC Bank and non-banking finance company Capital First, both of them they have completed their merger. They are going to create IDFC First Bank. V. Vaidhinagan is going to be the CEO and MD of the merged entity that is IDFC First Bank. IDFC First Bank is now going to be offering a retail and wholesale banking. It is going to provide. It is going to provide retail and wholesale banking products, services and also some uh, digital innovations to its customers. Karnataka Bank has tied up with PaisaBazaar.com for home loans. So Karnataka Bank it has signed in with PaisaBazaar.com regarding the home loans. The Reserve Bank of India it has announced a cap for funds raised via external commercial borrowings at 6.5% of the country's GDP. The Reserve Bank of India it has announced a cap for funds raised by our external commercial borrowings 6.5% of the country's GDP. What is this ECB refers to external commercial uh, borrowings. These refer to commercial loans which are given in the form of bank loans, securities, instruments, buyers credit, suppliers credit etc. So these are for non-resident lenders with a minimum average maturity period of three years. So Reserve Bank of India it has announced a cap for funds that are raised via ECB 6.5% of the country's GDP. 
The proposed amalgamation of Bank of Baroda, Vijaya Bank and Dena Bank, it has moved a step forward with the alternative mechanism headed by Finance Minister Arun Jaitley. So according to this alternative mechanism, the merger will be given in principle approval. What does this in principle approval means? In principle approval which means here in this case Bank of Baroda will be the transferee bank and Vijaya Bank and Dena Bank they are going to be the transferer banks. So Bank of Baroda is going to be the transferee bank. Vijaya Bank and Dena Bank they are going to be the transferer banks. Bank of Baroda will retain its the brand identity while the other two Vijaya Bank and Dena Bank will cease to be separate legal entities. So in this context the headquarters of Bank of Baroda is in Vadodara. In our channel a special video on the taglines of the banks and the headquarters of the banks has been uploaded of all banks and shortcuts are also mentioned to remember them very easily and very quickly. So please do refer to that. The Reserve Bank of India has shortlisted six major IT companies including TCS, Wipro and IBM India to set up a wide based digital public credit registry to capture details of all borrowers and willful defaulters. So to curtail the increase in the number of willful defaulters and the borrowers, the Reserve Bank of India it has shortlisted six major IT companies to develop the technology and to maintain the list of this uh, willful defaulters and the borrowers. So this is public credit registry. Punjab National Bank has launched a special card in collaboration with Uttar Pradesh government that is PNB Rupee card for Kumbh Mela 2019. As we know Kumbh Mela is going to come up in 2019. Uttar Pradesh is going to be the center state for that. So Punjab National Bank and Uttar Pradesh they have come together for PNB Rupee card. So this card it is actually aimed to create a model of digitization at this edition of Kumbh Mela. So this is for hassle-free connections or say hassle-free transactions for the participating 12 crore devotees. It is expected that 12 crore people are going to visit. PNB Rupee card it also has an extra feature that is it works even in the absence of internet. So in the absence of internet also the PNB Rupee card works. The Reserve Bank of India in consultation with the government of India it has set up a six member committee headed by former RBI chief Bimal Jalan to review the economic capital framework of the central bank. So as we know the governors of Reserve Bank of India they have been resigning in the previous years. So the Reserve Bank of India in consultation with government of India it has set up a six member committee. So the committee is headed by the former RBI chief Bimal Jalan. So what is this committee going to do? It is going to review the economic capital framework of the central bank that is Reserve Bank of India. So let us see some economy news. The Defense Acquisition Committee it has approved procurements of 3000 crores including Brahmos missiles for two Indian Navy ships and armored recovery vehicles for Indian Army's main battle tank Arjun. So Defense Acquisition Committee it is going to spend 3000 crores on two Indian Navy ships and also armored recovery vehicles for Indian Army's main battle tank Arjun. The World Bank it has released 200 billion dollars in climate action investment in 2021-25. So this is the amount which has been doubled of its current five year funding. This it is going to coincide with the United Nations Climate Summit which is going to be held in Katowice, Poland. By now it was held. So World Bank it has unveiled 200 billion US dollars. The government of India and Asian Development Bank they have come together to improve the skill development ecosystem in the state of Odisha and also to develop advanced skill training center that is the World Skill Center in Bhubaneswar. So for this Asian Development Bank it has sanctioned 85 million dollars. So ADB has sanctioned 85 million dollars 
for the state of Odisha for setting up a world skill center. Crisil, a credit trading organization, it has forecasted that for the current fiscal, India's growth rate is going to be decreased by 10 basis point. This is because of the weakening global GDP and also the trade growth as a reasons for decline. So it, Crisil has said that the decrease in the GDP forecasted of India is because of the decrease in the global GDP. So worldwide, all the countries' GDP is being weakening because the trade growth is not as expected. Paisabazaar.com, which is India's largest online marketplace for financial products, it has launched a feature which is going to help loan applicants to choose their most suited lender on its platform. Asian Development Bank, it has released 31 million dollars. It has signed a loan agreement for the state of Tamil Nadu to increase the tourism industry. A report named Regulatory Indicators for Sustainable Energy 2018 was released by World Bank recently. This report, it was released in 24th conference of the parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which is COP24. So the World Bank has released a report. As we have already said, UN Climate Change Conference is going to happen in Poland at a place called Katowice. So on the sidelines of this, World Bank has released a report, Regulatory Indicators for Sustainable Energy. Asian Development Bank, it has signed a $60 million agreement loan with the Government of India for Brahmaputra River in Assam. So this is to increase the river bank protection works and also renovation of flood embankments and also community based flood risk management activities in critically flood prone areas. So it is going to develop the areas which is around Brahmaputra, the most flood prone areas. They are going to be safeguarded with this loan. The government it has included two currencies, Korean won and Turkish lira in the list of currencies for the exchange rate for accessing the value of imports and exports. So earlier Korean won and Turkish lira were not included in the list of our currencies in which the exchange rate can happen. So now the Korean won and Turkish lira were also included. Qatar has announced the withdrawal from organization of petroleum exporting countries from January 2019 and it is going to focus more on production of natural gas. So Qatar is a member of OPEC. OPEC as we know it is an organization of all the crude oil exporting countries. So the price of crude oil is decided by OPEC. So Qatar is a member of this OPEC and Qatar has now withdrawn from OPEC from January 2019 and it has said that it is going to concentrate more on the production of natural gas. Let us see some international news. Australia has become the first country to move against orphanage trafficking. Australia has become the first country in the world to fight against orphanage trafficking. So it has said that orphanage trafficking is a modern slavery. As per the estimates, 80% of the children who are living in world's orphanages, they have at least one living parent. So Australia it has marked this orphanage trafficking as a form of modern slavery. So children from smaller countries they are recruited in orphanages in the west for the purpose of profit through foreign aid. So the children they are taking there and putting them in orphanages and making them to work in order to get the foreign aids. Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Dubai Crown Prince. He has launched world's largest Arabic audio library in Dubai. So world's largest Arabic audio library has been launched in Dubai. Japan has chosen Chinese character for disaster to define 2018. So Japan they have chosen a Chinese character to define the disaster that has happened in 2018. So if that the Chinese character it is going to be representing the disaster that has happened in 2018. Nepal government has banned 
the new indian series of 2500 and 200 denomination note it says that it has not yet legalized them in their markets so they are only able to spend the 100 rupee notes the old denomination notes there west jerusalem is identified as capital of israel australia it has recently recognized that west jerusalem is the capital of israel and uae president he has declared 2019 as year of tolerance uae president h h sheikh khalifa bin zayed al nahyan he has declared 2019 to be the year of tolerance this is to highlight uae as global capital of tolerance so this year they are going to focus on five pillars in which the first one it aims on the values of tolerance coexistence of cultures second pillar is going to be on the global capital for tolerance via a series of projects that is a series of dialogues between the countries cultures and uh, civilizations so like this they have devised five pillars the capital of uae is abu dhabi the capital of uae is abu dhabi Nevada has become the first state in the United States with an overall female majority in its legislature. So in its legislature, Nevada in United States has become the first state to have a majority of female persons. According to the report RSF Reporters Without Borders, they have chosen India to be the fifth most deadliest place to be a journalist and Afghanistan is the worst. so the indian journalists they are not having proper rights and freedoms to cast so that is what this report means so india is the fifth most deadliest place according to rsf let us see some national news that have happened in the month of december president ramnath kovin he has inaugurated the 13th edition of cii agrotech india 2018 in chandigarh Union Minister Nitin Gadkari he has inaugurated the second edition of Kasdar Mahotsav at the Ishwar Deshmukh College of Physical Education in Nagpur so this Kasdar Mahotsav it is attempt we can say to provide our next generation with a better infrastructure so knowledge and everything required will be discussed here through education skill development and making them aware of our rich cultural heritage So Kasdar Mahotsav was inaugurated by Nitin Gadkari in Nagpur. Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Mizoram, Chhattisgarh, Karnataka and Madhya Pradesh all of them they have approved Mahila Police Volunteer Scheme. So this Mahila Police Volunteer Scheme it has been approved by the union government on the proposal from the states of Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Mizoram, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. So what is this Mahila Police Volunteer Scheme? According to this scheme Mahila Police Volunteers they will be engaged as a link between the police and also the community and these are going to help women in distress with one Mahila Police Volunteer she will be engaged per gram panchayat across the country. So under the scheme the Mahila Police Volunteer is required to mobilize community from Mahila and Sishu Rakshak Dals and also act as watch groups so the mahila police volunteer they would be paid a monthly honorarium of 1000 rupees they should be at least 21 years old and they should qualify 12th standard the first state to adopt such initiative was haryana and now this scheme is going to be implemented in the other states as well The National Green Tribunal has imposed 5 crore rupee fine on West Bengal government for non-compliance with 2 year old directive to improve their air quality in Kolkata and Howrah. So this money is to be deposited with Central Pollution Control Board. So as the West Bengal government has failed to improve the air quality in Kolkata and Howrah, the National Green Tribunal has imposed 5 crore rupee fine. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa is going to be the chief guest of our 2019 Republic Day celebrations in New Delhi. As we know, 2018 envisaged a grand event of Republic Day with all the ASEAN heads 
the 10 ASEAN heads attending our Republic Day celebrations. So this time the guest of honor is going to be South African President Cyril Ramaphosa for the 2019 Republic Day celebrations which are going to be held in New Delhi. The Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, FSSAI, they have launched a campaign in the name of Heart Attack Rewind for eliminating the industrially produced trans fat in food supply. So Heart Attack Rewind is the name of the campaign launched by Food Safety and Standards Authority of India. This is specially for eliminating the industrially produced trans fat in the food supply chain. Train 18, India's first locomotive-less train with a 180 km per hour speed limit during a test run at Kota Savai Madhapur section in Rajasthan is uh, observed. So train 18 it has breached 180 km per hour speed limit. India China Inc protocol on hygiene and inspection requirements for exports. So this protocol it was during the visit of Chinese Vice Minister of General Administration of Customs of China, Huai, who is a leading six member delegation to India. So Chinese Minister of General Administrations of Customs. Who I, along with his six member team, he was here. So on this occasion, India and China, they have inked the protocol on hygiene and inspection. The government has constituted a six member committee to oversee the sale of 149 oil and gas fields of state owned ONGC, Oil India and other explorers. So the six member committee was constituted for the sale of 149 oil and gas fields of state-owned ONGC, Oil India and other explorers. National Green Tribunal, it has instructed that an environmental compensation of 25 crore rupees is levied on the Delhi government for failing to curb air pollution in the capital. So this 25 crore rupees is to be deposited with Central Pollution Control Board. So as we have earlier seen, it, National Green Tribunal has also imposed a fine on West Bengal. So now it has again imposed fine on Delhi government. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is going to inaugurate the Bogi Bill Bridge. This is the India's longest rail road bridge connecting the north and south banks of the river Brahmaputra. It is going to fall in the eastern part of Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. So Narendra Modi is going to inaugurate this. This is Bogi Bill Bridge. Delhi government announced that it is going to launch a common mobility card which is called as ONE. The tagline of this is One Delhi, One Ride. This is for easy commutation on public transport. So to enable easy commutation of financial transactions on public transport, the Delhi government it has announced a common mobility card called One. The tagline of this is One Delhi, One Ride. Center, it has included Gangotri, Emunotri in Uttarakhand, Amarakantak in Madhya Pradesh, Parasnath in Jharkhand under the Prasad scheme. So the tourism ministry it has included Gangotri, Yamunotri in Uttarakhand, Amarkantak in Madhya Pradesh and Parasnath in Jharkhand under this Prasad scheme. A new inland water transport, India's first new inland water transport, Kolkata and Patna. This is for containerized cargo movement on National Waterway 1 was inaugurated. So between Kolkata and Patna, on National Waterway 1, containerized cargo movement is going to be initiated. The government it has sanctioned 254 projects which worth around 24,000 crore rupees to NMCG, National Mission for Clean Ganga. As we have seen in the previous months, government is very keen in cleaning the Ganga. This we can say it is in the rise of the coming event Kumbh Mela. So government it has sanctioned 254 projects worth 24,000 crores under National Mission for Clean Ganga. Union Minister Ashok Gehlot has inaugurated the website Media School ASME. Ministry of Shipping it has approved the development of Freight Village for the first time in Varanasi. So it is first of its kind in India a Freight Village is going to come up in Varanasi. Cabinet has approved the amendment of Jallian Walabag National Memorial Act 1951. So it has also 
approved the implementation of Shahpur Kandi Dam National Project, which is going to be built on the River Ravi in Punjab. So, center is going to allocate 485.38 crore rupees for this. So, cabinet has approved amendment of the Jallian Wala Bagh National Memorial Act 1951 along with Shahpur Kandi Dam National Project. Cabinet has also approved a MOC between India and Japan in the field of environmental cooperation and cooperation and postal field. And it has also approved an MOU between India and Zimbabwe for cooperation in the field of geology, mining and mineral resources. And also we can see that Indian Council of Agricultural Research, ICAR, Agricultural Technology Information Center is also going to be set up in New Delhi. So ICAR is going to set up Agricultural Technology Information Center in New Delhi. Supreme Court Bench of Judges, A.K. Sikri, S. Abdul Nasir, they have approved the draft of India's first witness protection scheme 2018 to ensure security to the witness. And India has also signed an agreement with Iran to pay crude oil in rupees to the Persian Gulf nation. India is going to pay in rupees. So India has signed an agreement as such with Iran. The second edition of Military Literature Festival MLF 2018, it was held in Chandigarh. The aim of this was to offer an opportunity for the younger generation to get acquainted with India's glorious military heritage. So what is India's military heritage? They are going to display here in Military Literature Festival which was held in Chandigarh. This is the second edition of it. India's first Gene Monet Center of Excellence, which is established by EU, European Union. It was inaugurated at the Department of European Studies at Manipal Academy of Higher Education, Manipal, by Ambassador of European Union to India and Bhutan, Tomas Kozwalki. So Tomas Kozwalki, who is Ambassador of the European Union to India, he has inaugurated the India's first Gene Monet Center of Excellence. Sri Ravi Shankar Prasad, the Minister of Electronics and Information Technology, Law and Justice, he has launched a national challenge for youth, the name of which is Ideate for India, Creative Solutions Using Technology at New Delhi. Union Minister of HRD, Prakash Javedkar, so he is going to inaugurate Kala Utsav at Bal Bhavan, New Delhi. So, Union Minister of HRD Prakash Javedkar is going to inaugurate Kala Utsav at Bal Bhavan in New Delhi. Union Minister of Commerce and Industry and Civil Aviation Suresh Prabhu, he has announced that they are going to set up National Medical Devices Promotion Council under Department of Industrial Policy and uh, Promotion in the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So, Union Minister of Commerce and Industry and Civil Aviation Suresh Prabhu. He has announced that under Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion, they are going to set up National Medical Devices Promotion Council. Ministry of Power has announced that nine states have achieved complete household electrification under PM Sahaj Bijli Har Ghar Yojana, which is in short called as Saubhagya Scheme. So under this Saubhagya Scheme, nine states have achieved complete household electrification. And Ministry of Power, they have also launched Eko Nivas Samhita 2018. So what is this Eko Nivas Samhita 2018? It is an energy conservation building code for residential buildings in New Delhi. So they have launched this. Government has notified some rules for in-flight calls, internet access through mobile phones known as Flight and Maritime Connectivity Rules 2018. The government is going to approve this. So thereby it is going to allow Indian and foreign airlines and shipping companies in the country to provide in-flight and maritime voice and data services. So now you can speak on phone or you can use the internet in the flights as well as in the maritime journeys. This shall come into force on the date of the publication of the official gazette. The in-flight and maritime connectivity, it is IFMC called, it can be provided using telecom networks on ground as well as using the satellites. 
So IFMC services, they will be activated once the aircraft attains a minimum height of 3000 meters to avoid interference with terrestrial mobile networks. So what are networks are there here? So to avoid any clash with this, once the flight it reaches 3000 meters, then these services can be used. Mr. Jean Yes Lee Drian, Minister of Europe and Foreign Affairs of France is on an official visit to India. So Minister of Europe and Foreign Affairs of France, Jean Yes Lee Drian is on an official visit to India. Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs chaired by Mr. Narendra Modi approved a project for the construction of 5.634 km long new four lane bridge parallel to the existing Mahatma Gandhi Setu on National Highway 19. So CCEA it has approved construction of a four lane bridge. It is going to be built parallel to the Mahatma Gandhi Setu. This is going to be built across river Ganga at Patna Bihar. The estimated outlay is 2,961 crores for this one. The Human Resource Development Minister Prakash Javedkar, he has inaugurated the Sangeet Kala Sangam at Dr. Ambedkar International Center in New Delhi. This is going to provide a national platform for all the art and music teachers of Kendriya Vidyalaya Sangatan. The object of this KBS Kendriya Vidyalaya Sangatan is to provide uninterrupted quality education to the wards of transferable employees of central government. Union Minister of Rural Development has signed a memorandum of understanding with Maruti Suzuki India Limited. This is for training rural youth for skill development under the flagship Deen Dayal Upadhyaya Grameen Kaushala Yojana. So Ministry of Rural Development has signed a pact MOU with Maruti Suzuki. So this is for skill development under the program Deen Dayal Upadhyaya Gramina Kaushal Yojana. National Child Protection Policy drafted by Women and Child Development Ministry. Lok Sabha has passed the Consumer Protection Bill 2018. So this is going to replace the Consumer Protection Act 1986. This bill is going to enforce consumer rights and provide a mechanism of redressal commissions at uh, district, state and national levels. So earlier the district commissions they were authorized to look into complaints involving claims worth up to 20 lakh. They can now look into for about 1 crore rupees. So who is the Minister of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution? It is Ram Vilas Paswan. So Mr. Ram Vilas Paswan is the head of Ministry of Consumer Affairs. The Union Ministry of Environment forest and climate change they have launched asiatic lion conservation project this is to protect and conserve the asiatic lions and its associated ecosystem so environment ministry has launched asiatic lion conservation project to protect asiatic lions government has launched igot program as part of digital india initiative so what is this igot igot is integrated government online training program NASCOM has partnered with IIT Madras to provide reskilling or upskilling of 4 million people on digital skills. So IIT Madras and NASCOM they have come together to train 4 million people on digital skills. Union government has decided to set up an expert committee to look into the all taxation issues that are faced by startups and angel investors. So government has decided that they are going to set up a committee to look into the issues faced by startups and angel investors. Sustainable Development Goal SDG India Index Baseline Report 2018. It was released by Niti Aayog in New Delhi. According to this report, it has aligned with Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas. So Prime Minister's propagation of Sabka Saath and Sabka Vikas has been uh, the main idea of this report we can say. So according to this global SDG movement, there are five P's related. So what are these five P's? The five P's are people, planet, prosperity, partnership and peace. People, planet, prosperity, partnership and peace. So these are the five P's according to this report. 
Among the states, Kerala, Himachal Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, they are on the top of the list and uh, running as front runners with a scores of 69, achieving the sustainable development goals. And among the union territories, it is Chandigarh and Puducherry who rank the highest. The Niti Aayog Vice Chairman is Rajiv Kumar. As we know, the Chairman is Narendra Modi. And uh, the Vice Chairman is Rajiv Kumar. And the CEO of Niti Aayog is Amitabh Kant. The CEO of Niti Aayog is Amitabh Kant. Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister. They have constituted a Logistics Development Committee under the Chairman of Dr. Bibek Debroy who is Chairman of Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has released a 100 rupee commemorative coin in the memory of Atal Bihari Vajpayee. On the 94th birth anniversary of Atal Bihari Vajpayee, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has released a 100 rupee commemorative coin. As we know, Atal Bihari Vajpayee's birth anniversary, which falls on 25th of December, every year it is celebrated as Good Governance Day. So on this Good Governance Day, Narendra Modi has released 100 rupee commemorative coin in the memory of Atal Bihari Vajpayee. Sahitya Kala Parishad, Department of Art, Culture and Languages, Government of Delhi. It has organized the 6th edition of 5 day long Yuvan Archya Samaroh at Kamani Auditorium in New Delhi. So a 5 day long Yuvan Archya Samaroh organized by Sahitya Kala Parishad is inaugurated in New Delhi. Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. They have organized India China Film Festival which is first of its kind during the first India China high level mechanism on cultural and people to people exchanges in New Delhi. So in this a total of seven films were telecasted was screened what we can say of which four are Chinese and three are Indian. The opening film was CZ12 which is known as Chinese Zodiac. The Indian films that were screened here were Dangal a Hindi film and Machar Zol a Bengali film and Ventilator a Marathi film. So who is the Information and Broadcasting Minister? It is Rajyavardhan Rathor. Rajyavardhan Rathor. International Gita Mahotsav 2018 was concluded in Kurukshetra, Haryana. It is a 17-day international festival. It is celebrated to commemorate the birth of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. As we know, it is Srimad Bhagavad Gita, which is very, very sacred for the Hindus. So, to commemorate the birth of Srimad Bhagavad Gita, the sacred scripture, the first day of the famous 18-day battle in Mahabharata. So this uh, festival is conducted. This time Mauritius was a partner country and Gujarat was a partner state. So here the acting president of Mauritius, Paramasiyum, he has announced that in February 2019, Mauritius also is going to organize an international Gita festival. The Lok Sabha on 27 December, it has passed the Muslims Women Bill 2018, Protection of Rights on Marriage 2018. This bill it is going to replace the Muslim Women Protection of Rights on Marriage Ordinance 2018. So this bill is going to replace the ordinance. Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways, Nitin Gadkari, he has notified about the Central Motor Vehicles Rules 1989 to mandate fitting of high security registration plates for all the vehicles from April 1st, 2019. So high security registration plates are to be fitted for all the vehicles from April 1st, 2019. What is this? It is a chromium based hologram applied by hot stamping on the number plates both at the front and the back besides laser branding of a permanent identification number. Ministry of Railways they have announced their plan to build India's first lift bridge to reconnect Rameshwaram in Arabian Sea with mainland India in the next four years. So the Ministry of Railways they have announced their plan to build India's first lift bridge to reconnect Rameshwaram in Arabian Sea to mainland India. So this is going to be come up in the next four years. National Human Rights Commission has launched a toll-free number 
1433 which is a facility to file complaints through common service center so a toll free number was launched by nhrc 14433 to file complaints prime minister narendra modi has renamed three islands of andaman and nicobar the ross island is renamed as netaji subhash chandra bose dweep and neel island is renamed as shahid dweep and havelock island is renamed as varaj dweep as we know netaji subhash chandra bose for the first time has hoisted the tricolor flag in port player so 2018 commemorates the 75th anniversary of this uh, hoisting of the flag in port blair so in this accord the three islands were renamed ross is named as netaji subhash chandra bose dweep neel is named as shahid dweep and havelock is renamed as swaraj dweep prime minister of bhutan leon chen dr lotte sering has concluded his 3 day visit so prime minister of bhutan was on a visit to india his name is lon chen dr lotte sering and indian railways has decided to give a grant of 40% concession in the fares of transgender of senior citizens 60 or above so let us see some state news nagaland has celebrated its 55th formation day home minister rajnath singh he has inaugurated the 19th Hornbill festival in the state in this accord so 55th formation day of nagaland was celebrated in the month of december indian owl festival was held at pingori village in purandar taluka of pune maharashtra and jammu and kashmir governor satyapal malik he has launched the aishman bharat pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana scheme at teachers bhavan gandhi nagar jammu so jammu and kashmir governor satyapal malik he has launched आयुष्मान भारत प्रधानमंत्री जन आरोग्य योजना इंडिया फर्स्ट इंटरनेशनल इंडिजीनियस फिल्म फेस्टिवल दिस इज गोइंग टू टेक प्लेस इन भुवनेश्वर ओडिशा एंड दिल्ली चीफ मिनिस्टर अरविंद केजरीवाल ही हैज लॉन्च मुख्यमंत्री तीर्थ यात्रा योजना सो अकॉर्डिंग टू विच इट ऑफर्स फ्री ट्रैवल पैकेजेस फॉर सीनियर सिटीजन फ्रॉम डेली टू फाइव रिलीजियस सर्क्यूट्स सो द नेम ऑफ दिस प्रोग्राम इज मुख्यमंत्री तीर्थ यात्रा योजना Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis he has launched a unique initiative the name of which is smart which means state of maharashtra's agri business and rural transformation so maharashtra's chief minister devendra fadnavis he has launched a unique initiative the name of which is smart tamil nadu government it has launched a 24 hour toll free helpline number 181 for women who are facing domestic violence and sexual harassment so they can get assistance from police or legal aid or medical services including ambulance so for this they have launched a toll free number 181 and madhya pradesh the heart of incredible india it is thrilled to host the adventure next for the first time the theme of this adventure next is pulse of tomorrow the adventure next event is held in uh, bhopal madhya pradesh is the first state to host this adventure next What is this adventure next it combines a marketplace meetings networking opportunities inspirational speakers and discourse and educational sessions as well Chief Minister of Nagaland Sri Neipur Rio he has inaugurated the first ever Swadesh Darshan project in Nagaland the name of this project is development of tribal circuit Peran Kohima Walker project so development of tribal circuit Peran Kohima Walker project was inaugurated by Neipur Rio in Nagaland fourth edition of India's largest contemporary art exhibition Kochi Muziris Biennial featuring a dynamic range of multimedia artworks they were held in Kochi traditional delicacy of Nalanda district of Bihar Silo Kaja it has got a geographical indication tag it is popular among the tourists who are visiting buddhist sites of Rajgarh and Nalanda so this is granted gi tag at chennai the tamil nadu government they have distributed 200 naval sea powered satellite enabled communication devices which were developed by isro to 80 fishing boat groups in tamil nadu this gadget is it is going to help tamil nadu fishermen to get cyclone and uh, weather updates on real time basis so they will be updated every second so these were distributed by isro to 200 NAVIC powered satellite enabled communication devices these were distributed to 
eighty fishing boat groups. The National Cancer Institute in Jajer, Haryana, which is also the India's largest cancer hospital, it has opened public service with the formal inauguration to be held in January. President's rule imposed in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir, it has completed six months under the governor's rule. President Ramnath Kovind, he has imposed president rule in the state. So after 1996, this is the first time the central rule has been imposed in the militancy hit state. Now the powers of state legislature they shall be exercised under the authority of parliament and all the decisions will be taken in concurrence with the president with council of ministers and the prime minister advising the president in the state of jammu and kashmir the governmental function has failed which resulted in the recent governor's rule imposed under section 92 of jammu and kashmir Haryana Chief Minister Manohar Lal Katar has inaugurated the World Herbal Forest Project, which is a collaboration of Patanjali and Haryana government at Morni Hill near Chandigarh. And the Manipur Assembly it has passed a bill which recommends life imprisonment for people who are involved in mob violence, and it is going to result in death of the person. The Manipur Assembly it has passed a bill which is going to recommend life imprisonment. for those who are involved in mob violence and it is going to result in the death of a person the three state level campaigns on beti bachao beti padhao they will be organized in maharashtra goa and dadar and nagar haveli to spread awareness among people to save and educate girls jharkhand chief minister has named scheme as mukhyamantri krishi yojana 2250 crore rupee worth scheme so according to this scheme 22.76 lakh medium and marginal farmers they are going to double their income by 2022 so jharkhand chief minister raghubar das has announced it andhra pradesh himachal pradesh and madhya pradesh they are on the top of the three performing states under the maternity benefit program pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana so andhra pradesh himachal pradesh and madhya pradesh they are the top 3 states under pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana marking the 94th birth anniversary celebrations of late prime minister atal bihari vajpayee maharashtra chief minister devendra fadnavis he has launched bharat ratna atal bihari vajpayee international schools for students in more fusel areas andhra pradesh is going to have a separate high court which is going to function in amravati at the new capital of the state as president ramnath kovin he has issued orders in this effect the beijing festival celebrations they were commenced on the banks of ai river in chirang district of assam delhi police has become the first police force in the country to digitize all malkhanas across every police station in the state under e malkhana project so they have digitalized all the malkhanas center has approved 1146.12 crores for cyclone gaja assistance for tamil nadu so cyclone gaja it hit tamil nadu recently so for that center has approved 1146 crore rupees a postal stamp dedicated to the inventor of rasagulla mr nabin chandra das was launched recently in a rasagulla fest known as bag bazaar or rasagulla which was held in kolkata west bengal so rasagulla as we all know it is west bengal's spongy and syrupy round shaped sweet it was invented by mr nabin chandra das let us see the important awards that were given out in the month of december swachhata pakwada of ministry of civil aviation academy it has awarded the three best performing organizations the three in the row are pavan hans limited airport authority of india and indira gandhi rashtriya uran academy Forbes list 2018 was released by Forbes India according to which India's richest man is Mukesh Ambani followed by Azim Prem ji and Lakshmi Mittal and Forbes India 2018 celebrity 100 which means Salman Khan has topped followed by Virat Kohli and Akshay Kumar PV Sindhu has ranked as the highest female paid sports person Odisha boy Situ Malik he is going to receive the National Bravery Award from PM United Nations it has honored Indian startup Help Us Green which recycles floral waste from temples to clean Ganga through its flower cycling technology so United Nations has honored Indian startup Help Us Green so this Help Us Green it recycles the floral waste from temples to clean Ganga 
through its flower cycling technology and delhi police they have entered into limca book of records for training over 2 lakh women and girls the chief minister of west bengal mamta banerji is awarded the scotch chief minister of the year award for the year 2018 Swachh Sarvekshan 2018 Award for Best Capital City in Solid Waste Management was given to GHMC Greater Hyderabad Municipal Corporation. So Swachh Sarvekshan 2018 Award for Best Capital City in Solid Waste Management it was conferred to Greater Hyderabad and Municipal Corporation GHMC. Telangana's MNJ Institute of Oncology and Regional Cancer Institute it has entered into Guinness Book of World Records. and it has also received high range book of world records recognition this is for organizing the largest men's health awareness program on prostate cancer on a single day so this is the first guinness world record achievement for a state government in the field of medicine pm narendra modi has announced the institution of sardar patel award for national integration which would be given for outstanding efforts to further national integration As we know, in, in the month of December, many cabinet approvals are there. So let us see them once. India and Japan in the field of environmental cooperation and cooperation in the postal field, they have signed an MOU, so which was approved by the cabinet. Cabinet also has approved the Shahpur Kandi Dam on River Ravi in Punjab with central assistance of 485.38 crores. India and Zimbabwe signed MOU. in the field of geology mining and mineral resources was also approved anti smuggling national coordination center and the directorate of revenue intelligence to tackle smuggling was also approved new child protection policy drafted under women and child development ministry and muslim women protection bill 2018 is also approved so let us see the appointments the new chief information commissioner is sudhir bhargava Prime Minister of Bangladesh is Sheikh Hasina. The new Acting Chief Justice of Andhra Pradesh High Court is Justice Chagari Pravin Kumar, and new India's Chief Boxing Coach is C A Kuttappa. The new M D and C U of Corporation Bank is P V Bharti, and the new President of Archery Association of India is B V P Rao. The new Defence Head of United States is Patrick Shanahan. and the president of south asian fencing body is rajiv mehta new ambassador to united states of america is harshvardhan shringla and the new coach of the indian women's cricket team is w v raman and the new ambassador of india to mongolia is mohinder pratap singh the first full time ceo of sebi is aarti chabra srivatsava The new chairman of Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs is Pranab Kumar Das and CBI additional director is M Nageshwar Rao and the additional solicitor general in Supreme Court is advocate Madhavi Diwan the new president of FICCI very important it is Sandeep Somani and the new chief minister of Chhattisgarh is Bhupesh Baghel and the director of National Crime Records Bureau is Rampal Pawar The new Prime Minister of Sri Lanka is Ranil Wickremesinghe. The new Chief Minister of Mizoram is Zoram Thana. IB Director Rajiv Jain was reappointed. Raw Chief Anil Dasmana was also re-elected or reappointed, and uh, Sri Anil Srivatsava was also reappointed as Niti Aayog's Principal Advisor. And the Chairman of FTII is Prajendra Pal Singh. The new Chief Minister of Rajasthan is Ashok Gehlot, and the member of UPSC, the new member is Bharat Bhushan Vyas. The new Chief Minister of Telangana is Kalvakuntla Chandrasekhar Rao, and the new Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh is Kamal Nath. The new Vice Chair of United Nations Panel of Auditors till 2020 is Rajiv Maharishi, and the new Chairman of Swift India is Arundhati Bhattacharya. The 25th RBI Governor is. Shakti Kanta Das the new MD of PCB Pakistan Cricket Board as Wasim Khan President of OPEC conference for one year is Manuel Salvador Quevedo Fernandez and the new chairman of Coca-Cola company is James Quincy the chief economic advisor is 
Krishnamurti Subramanian, which is very important. So Chief Economic Advisor is Krishnamurti Subramanian. And the Chairman and Managing Director of New India Assurance is Atul Sahai. And the Committee of Economic, Social and Cultural Rights by the United Nations Economic and Social Council is Preeti Saran. Global CEO of Oglivi is Padma Shri Awardee Piyush Pandey. And the Access Capital Joint MD is Salil Pitali. New Finance Secretary is Ajay Narayan Jha. And IAAF New CEO is John Ridgeon. The first Indian to be elected to ISSF's Judges Committee is Pawan Singh. ISSF's first Indian Vice President is Raninder Singh. The head of three members committee to oversee regenuation work of Ganga River is Justice UC Dhyani. MD and CEO of Bank of Maharashtra is A.S. Rajiv. And the President of Georgia is Salome Zurich Willi. And the CEO of World Gold Council is David Tate. The first leftist President of Mexico. The new first leftist President of Mexico is Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. That's all with the appointments. So let us see some important persons in news. State Bank of India has roped in Swapna Barman as brand ambassador of Yono. So Swapna Barman is a brand ambassador of Yono. Tuhin has become the first Indian to scale the Sahyadri mountain range. And Bollywood actress Deepika Padkone is the highest earning women celebrity in India. Prime Minister Narendra Modi he has emerged as a most popular global leader on social platform Instagram with 14.8 million followers. And Urjit Patel he has resigned as the 24th Reserve Bank of India governor citing personal reasons. And Pakistan's ex-Prime Minister Sharif was sentenced to 7 years in the latest corruption case centered on his ownership of a steel mill. Flipkart owned Mindra CEO Anant Narayan, he has resigned. And Belgium Prime Minister Charles Michael, he has announced resignation over crisis started by Migration Row. American adventurer, who is the first person to complete the solo trek across Antarctica is O'Brady. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa, he has appointed Indian origin Shamila Batohi as the country's prosecutor. Pakistan Hockey Federation Secretary Shahbaz Ahmad, he has resigned over mistreatment of national sport in the country. Let us see some science and technology news. Indian Railways has unveiled e-drishti software that is going to help Union Railway Minister to keep track of punctuality of trains as well as freight and passenger earnings from anywhere in the country. So this is a software launched for the Union Railway Minister which is e-drishti. So Railway Minister he will be able to keep track of all the punctuality of the trains and also the passenger earnings as well with this app. Air Forces of India and the United States, they will begin a 12-day military exercise, the x Coop India 18 at Kalaikunda and Panagar Air Bases in uh, West Bengal with an aim to enhance operational coordination. So a 12-day military exercise was held in Kalaikunda and Panagar Air Bases in West Bengal between India and United States Air Forces. So this is to enhance their uh, operational coordination. The name of this is x Coop India 18. Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh, he has announced a Pan India single mobile app that is 112 India, which is connected to the emergency response support system, which is exclusively for women in emergency in Nagaland. So a shout feature has been made available exclusively for women in the 112 India app. A bilateral air exercise between Japan and India was conducted in the name of Shinyu Maitri 18 with Indian Air Force at AF Station Agra. And also NASA spacecraft Osiris REX, it found water on the asteroid Bennu. On the asteroid Bennu, NASA has found water. The Indian Coast Guard, it has conducted a regional level marine oil pollution response exercise. The title of which is Clean Sea 2018 at Sea of Port Blair. 
and china launched the first ever spacecraft changi 4 which is going to attempt landing on the far side of the moon indigenously developed surface to surface ballistic missile agni 5 it has been successfully test fired from dr abdul kalam island of odisha coast and uh, in the second test in 6 months agni 5 has been successfully test fired from dr abdul kalam island of odisha coast NASA's Voyager 2 it has become the second human made object in history to reach the edge of our solar system after the spacecraft it exited the protective bubble of particles and magnetic fields created by the sun so Voyager 2 which is the second human made object in history it is going to reach the edge of our solar system the indian navy it has formally inducted its first fly away deep sea submarine rescue system at naval dockyard mumbai in the state of maharashtra rostam which is russian state run atomic energy corporation it has announced the commencement of installation of academic lomonov which is the world's first floating nuclear power plant this floating nuclear power plant it has a capacity of 70 megawatts and is equipped with two reactors of 35 megawatts each Researchers have discovered a human protein that helps fight Ebola virus and could one day lead to an effective therapy against the deadly disease. And world's oldest known plant virus named Zika maize chrysovirus 1 was discovered. So Zika maize chrysovirus 1, world's oldest known plant virus was discovered recently. The Air Force it blew its first military flight an AN32 transporter aircraft using blended biojet fuel in Bangalore the most distant object ever observed in our solar system known as 2018 VG18 it is nicknamed as ferrot it has been discovered by the scientists the most distinct object ever in our solar system it was nicknamed as ferrot it was discovered Tri series cycling and trekking expedition which was held in Sikkim was inaugurated by Indian armed forces and the civil aviation ministry along with airport authority of India they have launched an application named gas 2019 ISRO launched its military communication satellite the name of which is GSAT 7A from Sri Harikota Andhra Pradesh The satellite GSAT 7A it is a 35th Indian communications satellite it weighs around 2250 kg NASA's first flight to moon that was launched on December 21 1968 where three men flew to the moon for the first time in human history so the name of which is Apollo 8 it has marked its 50th anniversary in the month of December Japanese scientists they have detected the evidence of water in 17 asteroids for the first time using the infrared satellite Akari a naval hospital ship the INHS Sandhani it has been commissioned at naval station Karanga of the Western Navy so naval hospital ship the name itself says INS Sandhani it has been commissioned at uh, Karanga let us see some sports news Minzy Lee has become the first woman to win Australia's Greg Norman medal and Vinesh Pogat Sakshi Malik both of them they won gold at wrestling nationals Italy has won Admirals Cup sailing regatta 2018 and Yasir Shah has become the fastest bowler to take 200 test wickets after breaking 82 year old record Rajyavardhan Singh Rathod the sports minister he has launched the second edition of Khelo India and the International Cricket Council has named Indian whisky brand Royal Stag as official sponsor in a 5 year deal PV Sindhu she has scripted history she has become the first Indian to win BWF World Tour finals and Belgium has won the Hockey World Cup 2018 and pakistan is going to host 2020 asia cup the youngest woman michaela shifrin who is an american she has become the youngest woman to win 50 world cup sky races with victory in slalom in french alps and saudi arabia is going to host world chess games for the first time 
Former Australian captain Ricky Ponting has been inducted into ICC Hall of Fame. CA Kuttappa has taken over as India's chief boxing coach. Jaspreet Bamra as 2018 highest wicket taker in international cricket. He has overhauled Kasigo Rabada. Let us see the most important that is special days in the month of December. World AIDS Day is observed on December 1st of every year. So the theme for this World AIDS Day is Know Your Status. And 54th Raising Day is also observed on December 1st. The theme of 2018 54th Raising Day is Duty Unto Death. What is this Raising Day? This Raising Day it is celebrated by Border Security Force. So BSF along Pakistan and Bangladesh, they celebrate this Raising Day. The main ceremony is held in New Delhi. BSF, it has been India's first wall of defense since 1965. The motto of BSF is actually duty unto death. World Computer Literacy Day is celebrated on 2nd of December every year as computer has become a part of our human life and this day encouraged the development of technological skills particularly among people. So what does this day aim at? The day it aims to create awareness and also drive digital literacy in undeserved communities worldwide. This World Computer Literacy Day it was founded by our Indian computer company NIIT National Institute of Information Technology. International Day for Abolition of Slavery is observed on 2nd of December. The day it was first celebrated by United Nations General Assembly on December 2nd, 1986. So this day it aims to end slavery, which includes sexual exploitation, forced marriages, trafficking of persons and recruitment of child labor. International Day of Persons with Disabilities is observed on December 3rd. This is observed by United Nations. The theme for this year is empowering persons with disabilities and ensuring inclusiveness and equality. So it is celebrated since 1992. As a part of this day, the United Nations it launches a UN flagship report on disability and development. December 4th is observed as Indian Navy Day. India has celebrated its 47th Indian Navy Day in 2018. This day it is celebrated to honor the maritime forces role during the Pakistan war in 1971 when the Indian warships they attacked Karachi port. In 1971 that Indian Navy it left its shores for the very first time to attack Pakistan. The Maratha Emperor Chhatrapati Shivaji Bosle is considered as the father of Indian Navy. So Indian Navy Day is celebrated on December 4th. World Soil Day is celebrated on 5th of December. The World Soil Day, it is celebrated by Food and Agriculture Organization of United Nations. The Food and Agriculture Organization is headquartered in Rome. This time the objective is stop soil pollution. International Volunteer Day is also observed on December 5th. This time the theme of this International Volunteers Day is Volunteers Build Resilient Communities. United Nations agencies and all the NGOs worldwide they celebrate this day. December 7th is observed as Armed Forces Flag Day. Throughout India this day is celebrated to honor the martyrs as well as men and women in uniform who fight in our borders to safeguard the country's honor. December 7th is also celebrated as International Civil Aviation Day. The purpose of this annual celebration, it is to establish worldwide awareness on the civil aviation and in the social and economic development of the states. So what is the theme for this in 2018? 2018 International Civil Aviation Day theme is working together to ensure no country is left behind. December 8th is observed as Indian Navy Submarine Day. The day it commemorates the induction of the first submarine, that is INS Calvary. The first submarine was inducted on this day in 1967. So from then onwards this day is celebrated as Indian Navy Submarine Day. December 9th is observed as International Anti-Corruption Day. The theme for 2018 is an impediment to sustainable development goals. 
December 10th is observed as Human Rights Day. The United Nations General Assembly on this date has adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. So what is the theme of this day? The theme of this day is Stand Up for Human Rights. The theme of Human Rights Day 2018 is Stand Up for Human Rights. UNICEF Foundation Day is celebrated on December 11th. UNICEF which means United Nations International Children Emergency Fund. It is headquartered in New York. It has celebrated its 71st Foundation Day this year in 2018. UNICEF was created by United Nations General Assembly in the year 1946 on December 11th. International Mount Day is also observed on December 11th. The theme for 2018 edition of International Mount Day is Mountains Matter. This is celebrated by Food and Agriculture Organization to spread awareness about the contribution of mountains in the biodiversity. December 12th is observed as International Universal Health Coverage Day. International Universal Health Coverage Day is observed on 12th of December. It aims to mobilize diverse stakeholders to call for stronger, more equitable health systems and also to achieve universal health coverage leaving no one behind. The theme for 2018 Universal Health Coverage Day is Unite for Universal Health Coverage. Now is the time for collective action. International Day of Neutrality is also celebrated on December 12th. What is this International Day of Neutrality? This is to ensure neutrality among nations and abstention of a state from all participation in the war. So this date is aimed in promoting use of preventive diplomacy and also enhancing public awareness of a state from participation of war. So this day it is instituted by United Nations General Assembly. The National Energy Conservation Day 2018, it was celebrated on December 14th. So National Energy Conservation Day, it is celebrated throughout the country under the Aegis of Bureau of Energy Efficiency under the Ministry of Power. What is the objective to celebrate this day? It is to drive some mass awareness of the importance of energy efficiency and conservation in people. National Energy Conservation Day for the first time it was celebrated in 1991 when the National Energy Conservation Awards they were given away to industries for reducing the power consumption. An International Tea Day is observed on December 15th. International Tea Day it is aimed to draw global attention of governments and citizens of the impact of the global tea trade on the workers and growers of tea. So on, in this accord this year Indian Tea Association and China Tea Marketing Association both of them they have signed a pact in Kolkata. Indian Tea Association expects to double the export to China. December 16th is celebrated as Vijay Divas to commemorate the India's victory over Pakistan in 1971 war. The nation celebrates Vijay Divas to commemorate India's victory over Pakistan in 1971 war, which is a war for independence of Bangladesh from Pakistan. This date marks the end of Bangladesh Liberation War. International Day to End Violence Against Sex Workers is observed on December 17th. This date calls attention to hate crimes that are committed against the sex workers worldwide and also the need to remove the social stigma associated with them and also the discrimination shown towards them. December 18 is observed as International Migration Day. The theme of this day 2018 is Migration with Dignity. United Nations General Assembly observes this day. The theme is migration with dignity. The reason for choosing this theme is in 2018 nearly 3400 migrants and refugees they died worldwide while migrating. So that's why the theme chosen for 2018 is migration with dignity. National Minority Rights Day is also observed on December 18th. The day it is celebrated for promoting the actual and legal rights of minorities and also the employment opportunities and upliftment of them is also considered here. And one more day is associated with December 18th, it is World Arabic Language Day. 
World Arabic Language Day it is celebrated every year on 18th December this is since 2012 the date it coincides with the day in 1973 where Arabic is adopted as a sixth official language of United Nations so that day is observed as World Arabic Language Day the theme for 2018 Arabic Language Day is Arabic language and youth December 19th is observed as Goa 57th liberation day it was in 1961 that is on the same day 19 december 1961 from around 450 years of portuguese rule goa was liberated so 2018 it marks the 57th liberation day of goa and december 20 is observed as international human solidarity day the international human solidarity day it is organized across the world on 20th december so it is a day to celebrate our unity in diversity and also a day to remind governments to respect their commitments to international agreements december 22nd is celebrated as national mathematics day it is to honor the great indian mathematician his birthday is celebrated as in national mathematics day his srinivasa ramanujan srinivasa ramanujan he was born in 1887 and he compiled nearly 3900 results mostly identities and equations so the number 1729 is known as hardy ramanujan number so in 2018 131st birth anniversary of great indian mathematician srinivasa ramanujan is celebrated december 23rd is celebrated as national farmers day that is kisan divas it is celebrated in the honor of choudhary charan singh who was the fifth prime minister of india he served the country as prime minister for a very short tenure starting from uh, july 1979 to january 1980 So National Farmers Day it is celebrated across the nation every year with a focus of the upliftment of status of farmers. The National Consumer Day it was observed on 24th of December. The theme for 2018 National Consumer Day is timely disposal of consumer complaints. So we should also say that this time the Consumer Protection Act as we have already discussed it has been replaced with the Consumer Protection Act 2018. So in this accord also this national consumer day is very important. So national consumer day is observed on 24th of December. So this consumer protection act it provides the customers with effective safeguards against different types of exploitations such as defective goods etc. Good governance day is celebrated on December 25th. It is celebrated to commemorate the birth anniversary of the former prime minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee in 2018 the country has celebrated the 94th birth anniversary of former prime minister Bharat Ratna Atal Bihari Vajpayee across the country so 100 rupee coin was also released we have already seen by Narendra Modi on this occasion December 25th also marks the 55th anniversary of Sahastra Seema Bal president police medals in the distinguished services and police medal for meritorious services were given out on this day let us see some surveys which are very important according to unicef report india has highest number of children and adolescents living with hiv in south asia very pathetic and arton capital has launched the passport index the name of which is global passport power rank 2018 so according to which united arab emirates has topped the charts among 197 nations as the nation having the most powerful passport the top 10 fastest growing cities in the world from 2019 to 35 were picked in india so this was picked up by oxford economics report in this gujarat's surat has topped the list followed by uttar pradesh's agra india is the fourth highest emitter of carbon dioxide in the world according to the global emissions accounting for 7% of the global emissions in uh, 2017 india has stopped the road deaths according to global status report on road safety with the deaths of 1.51 lakh road deaths in 2016 globally the toll of road deaths it increased from 1.25 million to 1.35 in a span of 3 years sipri stockholm international peace research institute which is a sweden based think tank it has released a report on the world's 100 biggest armaments 
groups and it reported that Russia has emerged as the world's second largest arms producer after US. So US is the first largest arms producer followed by Russia. A study published in the journal Royal Society Open Science says that scientists had found that Dracula and it possesses the fastest animal speed and record. So what is the fast, fastest animal now? It is Dracula and Indian Oil Corporation, ONGC and NTPC, they emerged as the top three most profitable PSUs according to Public Enterprises Survey 2017-18. So which is the most profitable public enterprise? It is Indian Oil Corporation, ONGC followed by NTPC. Who are the worst? It is BSNL followed by Air India and MTNL. Some important people have demised in the month of December. So let us see. Stan Lee who is popularly known for the creation of characters of Spider-Man, Iron Man co-creator. He belongs to America. He has passed away. George H.W. Bush, the former 41st United States President, has passed away recently. A famous agriculturist of Tamil Nadu, Jayaraman, has passed away. He has written books like Neela Tikaram and Mamarutangam Param Pariyanel. And he has also launched Save Our Rice campaign and has organized Paddy Festival as well. West Bengal President Arun Kumar Shah, who is a seven-time national champion and first swimmer to win Arjuna Award from Bengal, has passed away recently. He has won Arjuna Award in 1967. Mohammad Ashrarul Haq, a senior Congress MP and a noted Islamic scholar of India, has passed away. And Ludmila Alexa Yeva, who is a leading Russian rights activist and former Soviet descendant of Russia, has passed away recently. Nebankar Gupta, who is a veteran in marketing industry, who is an expert who served at many companies including Raymond, Videocon Industries and Philips, has passed away. And senior Congress leader and former Kerala minister C. N. Balakrishnan has also passed away. Three times Grammy Award winner Zaz Singer, who called herself a song stylist, who belongs to California, had passed away recently. She is Nancy Wilson. Oscar nominated Hollywood actress of America, Sandra Lockie, has passed away. She is a very versatile actress. The National Award winning Malayalam film director, Topil Ajayan of Kerala, has passed away. Tulsi Ramse, who is a filmmaker known for making horror films, has passed away. And a legendary classical singer of West Bengal, Pandit Arun Baduri, has also passed away. The former Prime Minister of Nepal, Tulsi Giri, has also passed away recently. Noted Tamil writer and Sahitya Academy Award winner Prabhanjan of Tamil Nadu has passed away. Deepali Bortakur, known as Nightingale of Assam and a Padma Shri recipient has also passed away. Former Mumbai Mayor and Padma Shri recipient Nana Chudasama of Mumbai has passed away. Nirupam Sen, very famous veteran CPIM leader of West Bengal has passed away. Sulagitti Narasamma, who belonged to Bengaluru, who was a social worker and a Padma Shri awardee has passed away. Nirendrana Chakrabarti of West Bengal, who was a famous Bengali poet and a Sahitya Academy awardee, has passed away. Many books are there in the name of Nirendrana Chakrabarti. And Shehu Shagari, a former Nigerian president, passed away. Mrinal Sen, a contemporary of Satyajit Ray, a legendary filmmaker, and Padma Bhushan and Dada Saheb Falke awardee. Nal Sen of West Bengal has passed away. Nal Sen is very important. So he has passed away recently. Let us see the books released in the month of December. Chief Justice of India Ranjan Gogai has written a book in the name of Architecture of Justice, a pictorial walk through of Supreme Courts and High Courts of India was released. The book it speaks about the Supreme Court of India, this first of its kind book the 24 high courts and the 12 benches associated with it. Ministry of Home Affairs, it has released a book in the name of A Handbook for Students on Cyber Safety. This is to create awareness among the teenagers about online crimes and threats. A collection of President Sri Ramnath Kovind's selected speeches that were made in the year 
after he has assumed office were composed into a book and was published by the publication division ministry of information and broadcasting the name of the book is the republican ethic and lokatantra keswar ushinor majumdar has written a book the name of the book is god of sin the cult and the cloud and the downfall of asharam bapu the content of this book is that it speaks about the asharam's journey to spiritual godhood his fall from grace and long and arduous road to bring him to justice Usha Srinivas Lakshman has written a book known as Timeless Lakshman so this is based on the life and times of the legendary cartoonist and the late RK Lakshman Changing India a book which is written by Manmohan Singh this deals about the congress leader's vision narrated his journey from an economist to the politician and also he shared anecdotes from his life Varun Gandhi has written a book a rural manifesto realizing india's future through her villages the book it obviously it focuses on the challenges that are faced by farmers laborers student and teachers in villages across the country tony joseph has authored a book the name of the book is early indians the story of our ancestors and where we came from this speaks about the aryans who have arrived here nearly 65000 years ago Vice Admiral Anup Singh has written a book in the name Blue Waters Ahoy this deals about the chronology of history of the Indian Navy from 2001 to 2010 let us see the important seminars and meetings that have happened in December Indian Social Science Congress has happened in KIIT and 12th annual Indian Subcontinent Decision Sciences Institute conference was happened in Mumbai National Children Science Congress has happened in Bhubaneswar 55th Scots meeting which is very important it has happened in Delhi the first people to people exchange meeting has also happened in New Delhi as we said it is a meeting between India and China first of its kind WHO Global Forum has happened in Vaisag 39 GCC summit was held in Riyadh 18th India Russia Intergovernmental Commission on Military Technical Cooperation was held in New Delhi First international conference on sustainable water management was held in Mohali. 80th session of Policy Commission of World Customs Organization was held in Mumbai. India Water Impact Summit 2018 was held in New Delhi. Asia Pacific Summit 2018 was held in Kathmandu, Nepal. And United Nations Conference on Climate Change was held in Poland. G20 Summit was held in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Global Agriculture and Food Summit 2018 was held in Jharkhand and third ASEAN India Business Summit was held in Kuala Lumpur first ever India Indonesia Business Forum was held in Port Blair there are some important places which were in news in the month of December so let us see India's first international indigenous film festival it going to take place in February in Odisha in 2019 India's first Madame Tussauds Wax Museum has opened in New Delhi. Luxembourg is set to become the first country in the world to make public transport free implementing the move in 2020. India's first underwater museum to open off Puducherry Coast in INS Kadalur. India's first private sector unit for manufacturing unmanned aerial vehicles opened at Adani Aerospace Park in Hyderabad. India's first and world's third Railway University was opened at Vadodara this is dedicated to the railway minister Piyush Goyal and Gujarat chief minister Vijay Rupani National workshop on explosive detection was inaugurated at High Energy Materials Research Laboratory India's largest cancer hospital National Cancer Institute it was opened in Jharkhand Haryana Pakistan has rejected the Punjab's land swap demand to make Kartarpur as part of India So Punjab has requested Kartarpur of Pakistan to be made part of India and uh, Punjab in return asked for a uh, swapping so it was rejected by Pakistan India's first music museum is to be set up in Tiruvayuru Center of Excellence for Genetic Blood Disorders at Pratima Institute in Karimnagar was inaugurated by President of India and Virudu Nagar is the best aspiration district in Tamil Nadu Bogi Bill Bridge is going to be inaugurated by PM Narendra Modi it is in Assam 
India's first vertical lift bridge to reconnect Rameshwaram with mainland. So that is all about the current affairs in the month of December. So this is just a summary as you can see. So the detailed version in the form of MCQs has been given in the form of four videos. You can also refer to them for further detailed information. Thank you.